welcome to a new episode of Hi, welcome to a new episode of Ryan Bading's Wild Blind Tastings. And today we will take a look at a new whiskey out of my whiskey chest. So let's start with, uh, with choosing it and we will ask Siri to help us with that. Hey Siri, please give me a random number between 1 and 16. It's 12. Alright, 12. Hey Siri, please give me a random number between 1 and 8. It's 8. Alright, 12, 8. Let's see which whiskey that's gonna be. one. Now let's open it and pour it. All right. Let me close the chest right away. Then we have everything well in the first time. Okay, um, I don't have much news to be honest. There are no more uh, samples added since the last time. I do have some whiskies open downstairs that I have to add samples to. Um, but right now it's still quite full so I have some time to, to do that. Let's, uh, let's start with nosing this whiskey. Right from the beginning, I have the feeling that this is quite a little bit of alcohol. Because you get a little bit of an alcohol burn right from the beginning on the nose. You get again some wine gums, some plum, a little bit of chocolate, and a little bit of earthiness, which can mean that this whiskey is a little bit peated. But it's not very, very high peat, to be honest. <coughs> Excuse me for that. Some more honey. Some caramel. Yeah, I think this is a little bit of a higher ABV whiskey. Let's have a little sip. That's nice. It's creamy with some milk chocolate and get some strawberries, um, a little bit of honey and oak. And there is this light mineral earthiness to it, which um, can mean that it's slightly peated, but I'm not 100% convinced yet about that. The whiskey has been in, in a cask that has given quite some flavors, loads of fruitiness, some hints of vanilla. Um, I'm not sure if this is peated. If it is, it's been very lightly. I do think this might be um, a sherry cask or um, a wine style finish cask. <coughs> Sorry for that. I've been having some problems with my with my throat, with my coughing, which makes it a little bit difficult to keep up the reviews. Um, like not to record, I'm looking forward to them. But there are times that I feel like recording it, that my throat isn't fine or that I'm coughing a lot. Like this is, this is nothing compared to what it has been. So I'm sorry if the reviews are not weekly as the way I try it. Like I'm, I'm trying to go back to that. But that's by, why the last couple of weeks it has been a little bit slow. 
So yeah, the wine comes remind me a little bit to an, an active first fill bourbon cask, but I also get the the plums and the, the sweetness that is a little bit more familiar to me with sherry matured whiskies. So it can be that it has been first matured in, in bourbon and then later finished in one of the other casks. But I'm I'm not 100% sure or that it has been matured mixed, can also be. There's this slight hint of oak with the wood influence. Further, a little bit of spices. I'm I'm thinking this is this is peated. I'm not 100% convinced, but I'm gonna go with a peated whiskey in the style like Perhaps Highland Park might be. Um, Springbank could be, but I, I have the feeling that this is not Springbank, but a little bit that level of peat. And I like it. Um, can be can be a Highland Park because of the the sweetness of I think it, it has part of the sherry matured whiskies, but I'm not getting a lot of uh, strong tannins and wood spices which would indicate a lot of uh, European oak so I think it's more American oak sherry matured There we are back So alcohol-wise, I'm not convinced that this is cask strength, but it, like it might be a lower cask strength, around 51-52% or like 48. I don't think it's lower than 46. Yeah. Though, though perhaps it's around 46, because on the nose I got a little bit of the Winey, soury, alcohol notes in the beginning, but they're gone now. So it might be, yeah, I think it might, yeah, 46%. So I'm going for get some more chocolate, a little bit of fudge, yeah, caramel. That's a nice, it's a nice nose. Age wise. In the beginning I got a little bit of the alcohol, so that could indicate it would be a little bit younger. But on the on the palate I don't have anything of raw edges. It's a nice mouth coating and smooth. So I think medium matured. 10, 14 years old. Perhaps an NAS with some older whiskey mixed in, I don't know. I stay a little bit around the Highland Park, but like the, the not the higher peated Highland Park stuff, but the lower peated, or could also be an active cask that has been uh, toasted a lot and that has got some uh, smokiness, earthiness from the cask. Can be. Alright, I have a little bit left. But I don't think I'm gonna get any closer in, in the notes and in getting what it's gonna be. So, chocolate, caramels, honey, fudge on the nose, on the palate, some more wood spices. Might have a little bit of peat on it, but very, very little. Um, and in general, a nice whiskey, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it, I'm liking it. Let's take a look what it is. First of a sip of water. And then... This is the L450. Let me open the app. This may take a while. Alright, we're at the L now, I'm scrolling down, 450, oh wow, 
It's a Glenn Moray, 30 years old. Wow. I was really off in there. It's 43% ABV. I think it has whiskey in here that has been distilled in 1974 or older. It's a nice whiskey, but I didn't guess it was 30 years old. Like the, the wood spices would indicate a low maturation or a very active cask. In this case, it was a low maturation. I think it's all ex bourbon casks, if I remember correctly. Um, it's a nice whiskey, but depending a little bit on the price that you're paying for it, it will be worth worth it or not like i think some of them are going like if you can still find it this this one is bottled in 2000 and 2004 i think 2004 2007 one of the two um and so yeah if you can still get it and it's like 300 400 euros mm, I wouldn't buy it for that money, to be honest. But if you can get it for like 200 or lower, it's it's interesting. I do sell samples of this one. If you're like, oh, I want to try an older Glamour that is not longer available, um, ask me. I do have some samples. I think they're around. Um, I think they're around 18 euros, more or less. For, uh, for three centiliters. Don't expect a mind-blowing whiskey, no. But it is an interesting whiskey and it has a lot of nice milk chocolate caramel flavors, uh, some honey in it. There's this wood spice that confused me a little bit with the peat. Um, an interesting whiskey, worth the money, depends on what you're paying for it. Um, if you yeah if, if you can still find it that's also the case all right thank you for joining me again for another blind tasting as you can see i can be completely off the hook by guessing what it's gonna be because i would have never guessed this is this was a glen murray thank you for joining me make sure to check out the other videos that i have i'll put here uh the other blind tastings that i'm doing and i'll put here not sure if I have another Glenmore video. I don't think so. So here you can find whatever YouTube recommends. Have a great day and enjoy your whiskey.